Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. This is Sam I.B., reporting here for The Media Speaks. I'm going to get straight into the news, but before I do, we've got a little problem here at The Correct Views. How many of you like the Dunce Cap of the Month Award? Me too. I like making them. It's great. A lot of people said they want they watch this show because I am aggressive in a nonviolent way. I am very teeth out, as it were, towards people that are making the human experience, if that's what you'd like to call it, just a little bit worse. I send dunce caps to people every month. You guys know that. Dunce Cap of the Month Award. I gave it to people that wanted to harass uh, family for owning a deer. I've given it to people, uh, the Department of Energy, for allowing radioactive materials to be put into our silverware. They open it up, there's a dunce cap, and there's an award in there explaining how they're stupid. Uh, look them up on my channel. I do it every month. I have since January. Friends, if you want me to keep doing this, I'm going to need some donations. The Omaha, Nebraska dunce cap was $49. I cannot be spending that kind of money every month. I mean, there are no shortage of idiots. And if you guys, I will be the one that goes out there and calls out stupidity as stupidity. I'll do it. You want someone to do it? I'll do it. Because I think it makes the world a better place by exposing the illogic that is in it and that is being given to us from some people. But if you want it to stay, I need your help. All right, guys, natural news. Deadly levels of radiation are found in food 225 miles from Fukushima. Media blackout on nuclear fallout continues. Remember I told you that there would never be an end to the Fukushima disaster? For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about here, it's the meltdown that happened a couple years ago in January that is still spitting out cancer and heart-destroying cancer-causing, heart-destroying radionuclides every day. And um, I'm going to be talking about a Becquerel in a second. A Becquerel is, in layman's terms, one nuclear reaction that happens per second. And each Becquerel is one of those. Uh, a nuclear reaction is one reaction that could lead to something that gives you cancer by pulling the electrons out of your cells. And if you don't know what that means, just trust me on this, okay? People smarter than me taught that to me. New data released by Japan's Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare shows once again that the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster is far from over. And despite a complete media blackout on the current situation, the levels of cesium-137 and 134 found in produce and rice crackers located roughly 225 miles away from Fukushima are high enough to cause residents to exceed their annual radiation exposure limit in just a few months or even weeks. According to FukushimaDiary.com, a great site by the way, which posts up-to-date information about the Fukushima disaster, rice crackers and tangerines produced in Sizaoka Prefecture are testing high for both cesium-137 and 134, rice crackers, according to the data sheet, tested 3.7 becquerels per kilogram of 137, while tangerines tested at 1.64 becquerels of 134 and 3.14 of 137. Every time you eat one of these, this happens in your body. And no matter how old you live to be, you can never get them out of your body. As a matter of fact, the older you live, the more damage will be done by these throughout your whole life. That is what General Electric has done to us. They have allowed a nuclear, basically a nuclear meltdown on a triple scale in Fukushima, at least on another melt through, and the water is being poisoned and you and I are being poisoned. Avoid the tangerines and avoid anything that comes from the West and that comes from the Orient west of our country, you know, east. You know what I mean. In Suzuka Prefecture is located 80 miles southwest of Tokyo, which is highly concerning as it is actually farther away from Fukushima than Tokyo. In other words, it is so, it's closer 
Tokyo is closer to Fukushima than this uh, Suzuku, Suzuku, S-H-I-Z-O-U-O-K-A prefecture is actually further away than Tokyo. This is concerning because Tokyo, I think, is the, one of the second or third largest city in the world, maybe the first, and they are being poisoned. And the dirty secret is that if you live in Tokyo, you will die sooner because you live there. That is medical fact, whether you want to hear it or not. You tune into the correct views for the truth, and the truth I will give you. Live in Tokyo, die sooner. Be miserable your whole life because that's what it does to you. It doesn't just kill you. It will make you miserable your whole life. Radiation levels continue to increase in lakes and rivers north of Tokyo. It says uh, all other data released on FukushimaDiary.com shows that radiation levels in the rivers and lakes and shorelines around Kisawa City in Chiba, located 20 miles northeast of Tokyo, are dangerously high and getting higher. The disaster is not getting better, people. And the disaster is getting worse, which is exactly what it will do forever. Forever, yes. We're talking about billions of years on these half-lives. So, yes, forever. This is from Ryan.ru. I don't know. R-I-A-N.ru. Putin warns Korean crisis could be worse than Chernobyl. Why we're on the topic of, uh, of Russia here. Uh, I should say radioactivity here. Friends, I'm no Putin fan. I happen to think he is a, uh, he's, a he's very much a communist. He's, uh, he's taking the Soviet Union in the wrong direction. Uh, he's not taking them in a pro-freedom direction at all. However, nobody, nobody knows more about nuclear, miss, uh, nuclear messes than Russia. Yeah, you could argue that Fukushima is worse than Chernobyl. Yes, it is. However... However, they also had, besides Chernobyl, the um, a nuclear waste accident that you know, was causing uh, all kinds of disasters. It's the most, it's the most uh, toxic place on Earth where the uh, weapons, uh, I think it was weapons, uh, melted down in the 50s, 60s I think it was. And it was a disaster and they tried to hide it and it made things much, much, much worse. And to this day... There are uh, nuclear deformities that are worse than what they're seeing in Chernobyl. So nobody knows about nuclear disasters like the Russians do. And don't forget, the Russians at first lied to their people, just like gov the Japanese government is doing now. Although at least they did uh, do more to move people away than Japan is doing. So, I mean, the, 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 the Soviets were better people than the, the Japanese government in terms of how they treated their people, which says a lot and is very sad. Russian President Vladimir Putin appealed on Monday for calm on the Korean peninsula, warning that the escalation of tension in the region could lead to a nuclear disaster far worse than the Chernobyl incident. We are concerned about the escalation on the Korean peninsula because we are neighbors and because if God forbid anything should happen there, it says, Chernobyl, of which we are all only too aware of, would seem like mere, ch mere child's play. In comparison, Putin said at a joint news conference with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Of course, uh, it's uh, Angela Merkel that was wise enough to try to move Germany away from new plants uh, with varying degrees of success. Um, I would like to call on everybody to calm down and sit down at a negotiating table and calmly resolve the issues that have been accumulating there for many years. And let me tell you something, Russia's not stupid. They know that if Korea even attempted a nuclear launch, even attempted it, much less succeeded, there wouldn't be a North Korea. God, and I, I have been saying this all along, I'm as anti-war as anybody. You try to nuke us, and we will turn your country into a parking lot, and I'm not afraid to say that I'm in favor of that. Do not threaten to nuke me or my country, and I'm sure most people listening to this agree. And of course, you got the fallout issue. I've been saying, too, America could be very, very likely to overreact, which, of course, uh, you know, the warmongers among us would say, yeah, flatten them. Well, you know what? You get carried away making that parking lot I was talking about, and you've now created a nuclear waste zone that will poison our food and our imports and our neighbors and our allies. So it's a double-edged sword. So listen to Russia on this. They know. <clears throat> Now I've got uh, a couple more stories here. This is from NPR. 
And this is wonderful news. A drug-sniffing dog case fails Supreme Court smell test. The U.S. Supreme Court turned its nose up Tuesday on the use of drug-sniffing dogs, ruling that the Fourth Amendment limits the ability of police to use animals near your home, one for liberty. By a 5-4 vote, the High Court upheld a Florida ruling that suppressed evidence found in a marijuana possession case after a police drug-sniffing dog was brought near a home and alerted officers. The Florida court rejected the evidence, saying that the officers did not have probable cause to use the dog. And I agree. Can I bring a dog over to the police station whenever I want to? How about I just start sniffing around? They work for us. We don't work for them. And I'm delighted that this happened. Excellent news. To find a visitor knocking out on the door is routine if it's sometimes unwelcome. To spot that same visitor exploring the front path with a metal detector or marching his bloodhound into the garden before saying hello and asking permission would inspire most of us, well, to call the cops, Scalia wrote. Beautiful. Uh, the dissenting opinion idiot Justice Samuel Alito noted that a police officer also detected the smell of marijuana approaching the house. The conduct of the police officer in this case did not constitute a trespass and did not violate a respondent's reasonable expectation of privacy. Yeah, of course, now if, if he'd have gotten his way, Alito, you bonehead, if he'd have gotten his way, if your neighbor is smoking pot, they can use that as an excuse to go through your house. That has a definition that is called, that is a definition of tyranny. Idiots, use the thinking part of your brain, Alito. He probably doesn't have one. The last thing I want to get to, um, all over America, evangelical Christians are being labeled as extremists and hate groups. I'm not going to get into all this, but I'm sure many of you know that Christianity is now being attacked the same way that Islamists were right after 9-11. And there's something in here that really hacked me off. You're going to want to read the whole thing, all right, obviously, but I... There's one thing in here that really hacked me off, because I've heard this argument before, and I'm going to explain why it's really dumb. Below, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Below that slide is a slide, or read the article. There is accompanying text that condemns any religion that believes that it is the only way, the right way, and that that believes that all other religions are wrong. Listen to this quote. Extremism is a complex phenomenon it is defined as beliefs, attitudes, feelings, actions, or strategies of character far removed from the ordinary. Because ordinary is subjective, no religious group will label itself extreme or its doctrine extremism. However, it says, religious extremism is not limited to any single religion or ethnic group or religion of the world. Every religion has some followers that believe that their beliefs, customs, and traditions are the only way and the right way, and that all other practicing faiths are the wrong way, seeing and believing that their faith is superior to all others. i got to read this next paragraph. Well, that is exactly, it says, what evangelical Christians believe. They believe that the death of Jesus Christ on the cross is the only payment for sin, and thus the only way to be reconciled to God Unfortunately, this belief is now being labeled as religious extremist. Listen, idiots that don't believe in it, I don't care, it's fine. I believe that that sentence is true. That Jesus Christ alone, if you've heard of him, if you haven't heard of him, the Bible already mentions that, I hate that argument too. If, you've, if you know the truth and reject it, then I believe you probably, from what I gather, you won't be seeing heaven. I believe that. I believe that Jesus is the only way. Extremism would mean that I want to force you to believe that. You can believe that the moon is made out of cheese and you can worship the mighty rat people that live there. That is fine with me. I don't have a problem with it. That is between you, God, and the mice men. I don't care. Extremism would be for me to care and to force my beliefs onto you. Believing it is not extremism. And another thing is, <coughs> it's absolutely impossible for all religions to be right. I hate when people say that. If you don't know what you believe, that's fine. If you don't want to be a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim or a Hindu, that's fine. But all religions cannot be right, and I'm going to tell you why. 
If Jesus says that I am the only way, and the Hindus believe that there are many gods, one of them have got to be wrong. They cannot both be right. This cannot be a black t-shirt and a white t-shirt at the same time. Do you see? The sky cannot be blue and red at the same time. You don't give me the twilight. You know what I'm saying. It's either an apple or it's a pear. If you're calling it an apple, you both can't be right. Therefore, nobody's religion should be trampled upon. But common sense, regardless of what you do believe, common sense says that all religions cannot be right. That's impossible. If Islam says that there are no gods but Allah, and to believe in the Holy Trinity is grounds to get your head cut off, then either the Islamists are right, the Christians are right, or they're both wrong, but they can't be all right. Thank you for listening to the correct views, my friends. Good night. God bless. Thank you for listening. And please donate to the show if you can, because all the money I get goes to a better show. And make sure you check out The Media Speaks at TheMediaSpeaks.com. Read the articles by D. Lake, Court, Kyle, and myself. Thanks.